To convert an address to coordinates, Google has a nice API. You can search for a Google Geocoding API and below the ads, you should find this API here. That's the documentation of the API. And you can of course check that out to learn all about that API. In the end, what we wanna do is we wanna do a geocoding request here on the right. We wanna search for an address and get back coordinates. Now, to be able to send the request there, we need an API key. That's not something we need on our API we build, but a lot of API which are exposed to the public, which is not the idea of our API, a lot of APIs which are exposed to the public require API keys so that they can kind of keep track of the users working with their API. Now, to create such an API key, we first of all need a Google account. So let's sign in. By the way, in case you can't create a Google account or you can't set up billing with a credit card, which you will also need, unfortunately, to work with the Google APIs, you can just write some dummy code that simply translates every address into the same pair of coordinates so that you can follow along in the course just fine. I will show this in the next minutes as well. So now I did log in with my account and I can now click on get started here at the top and you'll be forwarded to a page where you can pick the products you wanna work with. Now there we only need places but it also doesn't hurt to choose maps if you decide to also use Google Maps on your front end with one of their SDKs like the JavaScript SDK they are exposing. But places is the thing we absolutely need right now. So you can click continue, then select a project or simply create a new project, which is what I'll do here. Course, project, you can of course pick a more meaningful name. Click next and now wait for this to finish. Now you might be prompted to set up a billing account and add a credit card. What we do here is free though. You can search for Google Maps pricing to find detailed information about their pricing and you will see that you have a $200 free usage every month for their APIs and that will get you very far. You'll find examples down there, you see what this costs and so on. So what we do with the frequency and volume we use in the course will be free, but of course check this in case you are working with Google Maps or any Google API in a real application. So here I will confirm that I want to use this account for billing. And again, if you can't set up billing, you can't continue here, but I will show you some dummy fallback code in just a second. Here I will just confirm that I will enable all APIs and then this will load a bit more. And I get my API key. By the way, no need in copying mine. By the time you're watching this, I will already have invalidated my key, of course. Now this key is something you should copy or just leave this window open for now because we will need it. Now I will add a new folder to the node application, which I'll name util for utility. You can of course name the folder how you want. And then there I'll add a location.js file. In there I'll add a API key constant, all caps to make it clear that this is like a global constant I will use in this file. And this is the API key I got here by Google. Now with that, we can write a function here in that file, which takes an address, reaches out to Google's API and converts this address to coordinates. Now, if you can't set up billing and you therefore don't have an API key, here's a dummy function you can use. Get chords for address. And by the way, of course, it does not matter if you create a function like this in the declaration form, or if you do get chords for address and use an arrow function, for example, you can use either notation. Here to mix things up, I'll use this declaration form and I expect to get my address here as an argument. Now, if you have no API key, if you can't set up billing, you have no credit card, you can simply return coordinates here. Coordinates where we have a latitude and there I will use the dummy latitude I have in the places controller. So essentially I will use this object here to be precise. I will return this object here, there now. That's my dummy. However, actually in the real function, which we'll write in a second, we'll make a HTTP request, which will be an asynchronous task in which therefore will work with promises. So we'll turn this function into an async function by using the async keyword in front of it. 
Async await is a functionality built into modern JavaScript. It in the end makes sure that this function or the return value of that function gets wrapped into a promise. And it makes sure that when you're working with promises in there, you can use await in front of the promise to wait for its response instead of promise then. And if this all doesn't tell you anything, Attached, you find more resources on promises and async await. Since it's JavaScript, I assume that this knowledge is there here or that you're picking it up side by side with this course. And therefore now what we have here, and that's the main takeaway, is a function which will return the coordinates but wrapped in a promise. So not immediately, not synchronously, but asynchronously through that promise. But returning this here is the fallback anyways, so only required if you have no credit card. Otherwise, now we'll write the code, which will send the request to Google's API and get us the coordinates for a given address. Now, to send the request from inside a Node app, we have some built-in core modules that help us with that, but it's a bit cumbersome to use them, to be honest. So I will use a third-party package here, which I install with npm install dash dash save, and that's the Axios package. Now, if you have some JavaScript and especially some front-end JavaScript experience, you might already know this package. It's a very popular package for sending HTTP requests from front-end applications to backends. Now, not known by everyone is that this package can also be used on a node server to send a request from there. And that's exactly what I'll do here. So I'll install Axios and it will allow me to send a request from my node server to yet another server, so to yet another backend. So let's run this here with npm start. And then here I will import Axios by requiring Axios like this. Now here, I can send a GET request to a URL. And now the question is, which URL? Well, we get that from the Google Docs. Again, search for Google Geocoding API to get back to their docs. And there it was this geocoding request. Here, you can simply copy this URL here and go back to your code. Now, I will use backticks here to create a template literal, another default JavaScript feature which allows me to create a string where I can easily inject dynamic segments. Because here, this address, this dummy address, should be replaced. So mark all that address, so everything after that equal sign in front of that ampersand symbol, and then add a dollar sign and opening and closing curly brace. That's the syntax for injecting a dynamic value into a string or into a template literal. Now, that is the address we're getting as an argument, but we need to convert that to get rid of special character or white space with the help of a global function available in JavaScript in Node.js, and that's the encode URI component function. Simply pass your string to it, so the address string, and it will give you back a string which encodes everything into a URL-friendly format. Now, we also need to inject our API key here and that's, of course, the global API key constant we created. Now, this sends a GET request to this URL, and it should return us the coordinates for that given address. So here I get my response by awaiting, that is available because I added async here, for the response. It's the same as if I would have called then here, and then added my response handling function here. It's just a bit easier to read, which is why I use it. And then there we can get the data out of the response. Axios gives us a data field on the response object that holds our data. And now I first of all want to check if data is not set or, and that's special for the Google API, you can read all about that here in their docs. If there is a status field, whoops, data.status, which is equal or which holds a value of zero results written like this. Google will give us this field with this text if no coordinates were found for the specified address. And this will handle the scenario that the user entered a valid address when it comes to our validation, so that it was a non-empty field, but an address which simply can't be found. Well, in that case, we'll get back this response by Google. If we do get back that response, I'll create a new error, a new HTTP error, and therefore I will import my own 
HTTP error class here from the models folder. A new HTTP error where the message is could not find location for the specified address, I mean. 422 could be a status code we set here because it probably happened because of an invalid user input, but you could also go for 404, it's up to you. And I then want to throw that error here. Now, if we throw an error here in an async function, the promise that is automatically created and wraps everything in the function will basically also throw that error. If we make it past this if check, we know we have no error. So then I want to extract my coordinates and I get that from data.results and you can read more about the structure of the response you get from Google here in their docs. So the coordinates can be found in data results. There, the first element, because this turns out to be an array, but the first element is the one that best matches the given address. There, geometry and then location. And this will be an object which looks like this here. So this is the location object. So it has this let and LNG key with number values in it, which we need. And here I will then return the coordinates. So that will then also return a coordinates object, just as we did it before with the dummy code in case you don't have an API key. And with that, we just have to make sure we export this function so that we can use it. So we can use module exports and set this equal to get chords for address. Of course, not executing it, just pointing at it so that we can execute it from inside our files. Specifically, the place controller. There, I want to use this now. So here I'll have get chords from address, which I will require from the util folder and there the location file. And now we need to call this when we create a place to translate our address to coordinates. For that, I will convert my create place function here to an async function as well by adding the async keyword in front of the argument list, simply so that we can use the await keyword in here and work with promises in a more elegant way. Now, since I did this, however, we should also not throw errors anymore, but call next here instead, because when working with async code, throw will not work correctly in Express. So you always need to next your errors now. With that, I still do my validation first. And once I extracted the address, it's time to convert the address to coordinates. So here we can call get chords for address and pass in the address. This returns a promise so we can await it and get our coordinates here. Now this might fail, it might throw an error, right? I'm throwing an error in there. And if we wanna handle an error when using async await, we have to wrap this into a try catch block. That's also vanilla JavaScript. So I will actually create a coordinates variable here and assign a value to it instead of try catch so that coordinates is not just scoped to the dry block. And then here we might catch an error if that fails. If we do catch an error, I simply want to next it. I want to forward it. I also want to return so that no other code thereafter runs. Since we catch the error, we don't quit the function execution automatically. So we have to quit it by calling return. Otherwise, if we don't make it into catch, so if we do get coordinates, coordinates will be populated with our coordinates. That also means that I no longer expect them here on my incoming request. Instead, I get them here when we convert the address to coordinates. Therefore, we will still have coordinates down there if we make it thus far, and everything in general down there can stay the way it is. Let's now give this a try. Save everything, and let's see whether it works. So here I'll try to create a new place. I no longer need to provide my coordinates here. I will create my title here, New York Stock Exchange, so that this is all valid and hit send. And I got an unexpected token error here because of that extra trailing comma, which I forgot to delete. Make sure you do and then send it again. And this is looking good. We got the location here. And since I'm not passing coordinates here, these have to be the coordinates inferred by Google. Let's also try a different place here by entering a different address. For example, the Marienplatz in München, Munich. 
You could enter anything here. Google will translate and look it up. That's really good. So here we have the Marine Platz, a place you probably have to visit when you are in Munich. And let's look that up. Keep the old coordinates in mind. We should get different ones now. And we do. So that's really looking great. We got that up and running. We also got no errors here on the server side. And therefore now we're even sending a request from our backend to another backend, to another API, which already gives us an idea of how we could communicate with our own API later. And we're doing this to convert an address to coordinates. And with that, I'd say, we have a pretty nice dummy REST API already, a Node Express application, which gives us exactly the API we planned. And the biggest thing that is missing right now, of course, is the database access, which we'll add in an extra module. Now, one thing I just noticed here, of course, we should return now because I'm no longer throwing an error. So function execution would not stop otherwise. Hence, we have to return here now to make sure we don't execute any other code thereafter. We didn't need to do that before when we threw an error because when we throw, function execution automatically stops. If we just next it, it does not stop automatically, so we have to return it. 